Cat, it's Maximus here. This is just a uh, relatively quick video about these Monsoon MM1000 4 inch by 8 inch uh, eminent technology based computer speakers. These are the satellite speakers of a satellite speaker subwoofer system. And there's actually very few videos or even much articles about Monsoon products. They actually started out a long time ago um, making very expensive four-figure plus home speakers and then when uh, 2000s era uh, when computers really started having sound and multimedia being standardized uh, they started coming out with a series of really high-end and essentially before their time computer speaker products all based off of the what would be considered the more one of the more premium ways to manufacture or build plain ear speakers and really, I do these videos. They don't get a lot of views, but uh, there. When I do videos about products like these, which is when you search for monsoon, monsoon speakers, there's like ten videos on YouTube. It was even a little bit difficult. I really had to dig around Google Images to find out that these were from the MM1000. So these did come with a subwoofer and a power brick. And really, the sad thing was, is these were pretty nice drivers, righteous drivers, but they just had way, a really terrible subwoofer and a, just a totally inadequate just way inadequate amplifier that would often fail because it would just people would have it cranked up all the way to try to get sound out of these and the set that these drivers came with was like three hundred dollars plus and they hardly sold any of them surprisingly enough with the explosion of uh computer gaming and that type of stuff they probably do a lot better now so there's magna pans which are really commonly known uh, actually invented in 1969, form of planar speaker. They're also electrostatic speakers, but those are very rare. How these speakers work is different from a normal speaker. Real quickly, a normal speaker has like a cone. At the back of this cone, there is a piece of wire wrapped around the circle and layers, an electromagnet. It's driven by these two terminals. The electromagnet goes through the permanent magnet, and so when you apply voltage, amplifiers are AC. Uh, it pushes the speaker out. A quick note, there's something called dampening factor and the, there is a uh, kind of a thing here. This is a linear motor because you have a permanent magnet and then a DC coil is when you have, uh, say, a bass hit pushes the speaker out. As it comes back, you have a coil wire moving past the magnetic field so it actually becomes a generator. It generates a spike of DC voltage and that's what dampening factor is. These types of speakers do not have that. They essentially exhibit a, a, a almost undetectable level of back voltage because the way that these work, and I'll show a flashlight, is these really are film. You can just shine a flashlight right through there and you can see the grid that's in there. And so how this works is it has a very thin sheet of polyester film, commonly known as mylar, and then what they do is it's incredibly thin and lightweight. And then they laminate a piece of aluminum. There, that looks a little better. So it has a mylar sheet, and they laminate a super thin piece of aluminum, and then they etch out uh, the aluminum that they don't want using a mask, just like circuit boards. It kind of looks like a circuit board. So this wire will actually come in, and on these, these particular models, the wire is actually soldered physically to the back of the diaphragm right there at the bottom. On these... The coil just goes up and down, and this is the internal grill. And the magnets are in what made the imminent technologies uh, different from the magna pans, and arguably a little bit better is that magna, early magna pans used copper wire, and then they moved to the same type of aluminum voice call on these. Uh, they always were aluminum, but they used rare earth neodymium magnets, so they used much stronger magnets, and that was like the big upgrade that eminent did. Monsoon license that technology and eminent technology is actually still around now. There are many infinity speakers that were made that had Emmett uh, ribbon tweeters. These are the same type of thing, just in a four inch by eight inch uh, panel. So versus having a coil in a magnet, which is much more efficient, especially if you put a horn in front of a cone speaker, these are very inefficient, but that doesn't, it's a little bit different in consideration when you're talking about planar speakers they are inefficient because you don't have you just have an open plane coil in between a sheet of magnets there and of course a sheet of magnets on the back 
And then, you know, as the voltage is applied, it pulls the panel back and forth, but it's much less efficient. That's one of the reasons they went with rare earth magnets was to try to increase the efficiency over uh, what MagnaPan had been using for decades, which was lower quality, lower power permanent magnets. Doing that allows you to increase the grill spacing. There's a few other advantages. Very early monsoons, just like with uh, cheap neodymium magnets anywhere, had corrosion issues, but that didn't seem, as far as I can tell, that they had moved on and used higher quality uh, nickel plating on their magnets when they had the, went to the computer speaker era and all their newer home speakers. So now you can start seeing part of the what makes them have a real distinct sound quality uh, advantage is even though they're uh, inefficient, most of that's just due that you need a high voltage potential to really get the drivers moving. But on the other hand, the entire weight of the sheet of film in this 4x8 speaker is probably less than the dome of a 1-inch dome tweeter alone. And that's the entire size of the panel. They are phenomenally lightweight. They don't generate a back voltage. That super lightweight means that they, of course, can have a super quick response. Uh, Mid-range and trouble, of course, coming out of these is excellent. And one of the odd things is, is even though this is a panel speaker, and yes, sound comes out the back as well as the front, surprisingly enough, they are the sound beam is pretty narrow coming off the flat panel, and it kind of seems counterintuitive because you think the sound would just come out in a, just a big, wide area. But that's always been one of the notorious things about panel-type speakers, is that you really need to have them set up just right you need to have your head just in the right position but when it comes to computer speakers you're always going to be in the exact same position and uh, i thought they really would have worked out great and they do surprise and what i mean by the amplifiers i have hooked these up to you know much more significant amplifiers such as you know a thx receiver where you can really drive them and it's surprising these don't need a tremendous amount of watts, but they do need uh, a lot of voltage. And they have sound amazing, amazing room filling sound. Um, and easily, if these had the right uh, amplifier, when they, they would have been $500 back in 2003 or whatever, which would have been outrageous for a two channel speaker system. That's really what they needed because these satellites sound phenomenal. I'd love to actually have. A whole bunch of them to try to set up the whole home theater setup with all the surround sound speakers just being these and then a nice uh, subwoofer to match them because obviously since this panel can't move very far these don't produce a ton of bass but all the other frequencies are excellent part of the uh, deal is is that you do have a wide area that the sound is coming out of being that thin sheet is super responsive also a sheet of film just like the surface of the water can vibrate at multiple different frequencies at the same time. You can have kind of a lower frequency and you can have a tighter frequency that's going over the top of the lower frequency. So you get really good separation of sound because they can reproduce multiple frequencies much more easily than a cone driver. That's why cone based speakers, you have a tweeter and a mid range and a woofer. And they do on very large planar speakers. But ones this size, it's just amazing how good they sound for just having one single panel. They have other advantages, even though you have to run, you know, lots of voltage to them. Of course, the voice call isn't trapped in a tight little uh, circle inside a magnet. It's spread out over a huge surface area, and it has just open air access on both sides. So the voice calls can cool uh, pretty well and really can take a lot of power for a long time. Of course, when you overdrive them, it's real obvious because that's when the diaphragm is physically smacking <laughs> the inside of the speakers. They did do a good job in these monsoon where you do have the diaphragm, but there's some very thin pieces of glued or bonded uh, felt on the inside, not this speaker grill, but on the inside of the frame itself. So if the driver does actually impact, it's not touching directly against the magnets. It has some type of cushion. Of course, with specifically with these monsoons, they have metal integrated grills, but since they're thin, you always want to pick them up like this. Inevitably, the grills kind of get pushed in, and then they have these issues here, and uh, something I was going to point out about these monsoons, and so you turn it up and you think, oh no, I'm overdriving it, and it's actually the grill. A quick tip about these real fast 
if anybody ever runs into these monsoons is that these two grills cross snap together and the snaps go through holes and you actually need like a pick and you can see these little snaps and you actually have to go through the little holes in the grill and slowly work all the snaps and they're kind of the same pieces used on both sides so you have to go down the right hand side and then you have to flip it over and then do the very same thing on the right hand side from the back in order to actually get these grills off and be able to straighten them out and to give them some uh, con they are surprisingly heavy because uh, of course it's steel grills steel sandwich a uh, steel base which is riveted replacing the wires if they got fatigued would be a nightmare because you have to uh, drill out the rivets remove the grills and then carefully desolder and resolder the wires which are soldered to aluminum on a polyester sheet so it's really not easy to do and surprisingly enough these can be home rebuilt with polyester sheeting you can order the stuff it's not very expensive to actually recreate the drivers the hard part is is actually tensioning the diaphragm properly just for anybody who might think of rebuilding or and there are some internet uh, instructions and guides on how to make your own homemade planar speakers it's actually much easier to do a homemade version of one of these than it is a homemade uh, cone driver surprisingly enough so the big deal with these speakers and it is true even with these little monsoons for anybody who catches this video is that they do these sound excellent these are probably some of the very best sounding actual satellite speakers themselves not the subwoofer and amplifier system but these satellites you know hooked up to a not a decent amp home amplifier really shine really have unbelievable sound and produce way more volume than you would ever expect a small speaker to be able to do um considering that they were just computer speaker drivers or you know meant to sit on a desk these drivers are actually really pretty nice in and of themselves oh and just to do a quick look if anybody if we can there's the logo for monsoon so if you ever see like monsoon floor standing speakers for a really good deal then i would definitely consider looking at them because they were very expensive these right here would be representative of their MM1000 sets. So these are the best of the computer speaker drivers they ever made, period. Um, there are other Monsoon uh, sets that were planar speakers, but they're all smaller and really small planar speakers really uh, do have a tough time. Um, but these 4x8s is about as small as you want to uh, use and still have them really provide excellent sound. So anyway, uh, this is just for some of the people out there who may have run into these or heard about monsoon computer speakers and ran into this video. Now you'll have a whole bunch more information about planar speakers as well as monsoon themselves. They really are eminent technologies drivers. They ordered uh, just this metal panel from eminent and then created packaging for it. And that's really kind of the aficionado thing is you're like you're getting nice eminent technology 4x8 drivers and uh i mean for just a bookshelf system these would be just fantastic you just surprisingly enough i mean that uh onkyo thx receiver i've had there's relative and absolute and so it's you know it's in i believe it's known as relative or it goes from negative to zero and then you can go above that and that's different from like old receivers where it's from zero to 100 you can change it but it's you know uh, it's a different explanation for another video but surprisingly enough you need like a real amplifier and then these really just are astounding anyway i really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing even if uh the few people who watch these more esoteric videos and even send me some real messages just, just letting me know how much they appreciate somebody at least putting an effort into creating videos on where there is a relative lack of uh that type of information and if you haven't subscribed to the Caddis Maximus channel, please consider doing so. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.